Hi everybody, it's Mrs. Peachy, and I am recording a tutorial for the Analyzing Digestion Portfolio for Biology. This is Unit 4, Lesson 5. Um, as you can see from the screen here, this is the course tree for Analyzing Digestion. And on slide 2 of this lesson, there is a checklist. If you click on that and open the checklist, it's going to bring up this very long lab that you need to do. So what you can see here is that there's a number of different steps, and you don't need to do all of these steps. In fact, there's only a few that I want you to do. Step one and two here, you're going to pick between them. Then you are not going to do step three, the design and experiment that answers the question, how is stomach acid neutralized? We're not going to worry about that one. Um, I don't want you using that as an option because it's just, it doesn't really work very well. Do not do the carry out the quick check lab on page 878. Do not do the complete analyzing data on page 892. Um, do not do the my pyramid thing on page 892. You are going to carry out approved experimental procedures. Um, we're going to do a, a little table instead of a lab report and I'll explain that in a minute and you're not going to review the meal and exercise plans you made. Um, so we're really limiting the size of this portfolio, okay? So let me go through uh, what your options are. This is, let's see here. If I go to our website, my mouse is behaving rather weird. you're going to get a little blooper in there. All right, so on my website, you're going to go to where it says biology, of course, and then I've put on here the analyzing digestion rubric. This will come up. You get two options, option one and option two. You don't need to do both of them, and let me explain what you do for either one. For option one, you are answering the question, does amylase digest starch? So in order to do this, you need to have something made of starch. I would suggest a cracker, but you could also use like cereal or um, cookie or I'm trying to think of other things that work well. Uh, popcorn works pretty good. Potato, no, not, yeah, potato chips would probably be fine too. So things that are going to be easy to absorb liquid, so pasta doesn't usually work well, um, and something that you can easily grind up, so like a raw potato isn't all that good either, okay? You also need a source of amylase, and the easiest source of amylase is going to be your spit. Yes, you heard me correctly, everybody. I said your saliva. So that's where you're going to get your amylase from. So the idea is, if amylase digests starch, then your spit will digest the cracker or whatever food you choose to use. First thing you got to do is make sure whichever food you choose actually has starch in it. So the best way to do that is to take that food, and you will need to have some iodine. Now, way back at the beginning of the year, you bought iodine when we did that um, cell-sized portfolio. So hopefully you still have some left. So 
in order to check to see if your food has starch in it, put a couple of drops of iodine on part of it. And if it changes from brown to purple, then it has starch, okay? So once you've confirmed that your food has starch in it, then you're gonna check to see if amylase digests the starch. So to do this, you're gonna take your food and you're gonna put spit on it. Um, now there's a couple ways that you can do this. First method's pretty easy. You put the food in your mouth and you chew it up. Chew it, chew it, chew it for maybe 30 seconds or so. You spit it out into a container. That container should be made of like plastic or glass because those two things won't react with the iodine. Then put a couple drops of the um, iodine on it and see if it changes color. If it changes to purple, then there's still starch in there. If it doesn't change to purple, if it stays brown, the starch is gone. So compare that to the original test you did to see if um, there was starch in your food, okay? Second experiment is do acidic conditions deactivate amylase? So the idea is if I add acid to the amylase, it no longer works. So again, what you need to do here is come up with a food that has starch in it, okay? And you need to um, check to see if the acid is going to deactivate the amylase. So what you can do is you can actually take your cracker again and you can just maybe pour some vinegar on it and then put a little iodine on there and see if it changes color. If it changes to purple, then you'll know that there's still starch present in it. Take a second cracker, chew it up good, 30 seconds or so, spit it out, and um, again put the drops of iodine on it. And if it changes to purple, there's still starch in it if it keeps brown then the starch is gone. Then the third one you're gonna do is you're gonna take um, some saliva, spit it out into a container, and then fill those little medicine cups that come with cough medicine, those work really well. So kind of fill that up about halfway with spit, and then about the other half of the way with vinegar, mix it up, and then take your cracker and um, put it like in a plastic Tupperware container or whatever, Pour your spit vinegar solution on it and crunch it all up with a spoon and let it set there for a good couple minutes. And now add the iodine on it and see is it, you know, the same as the one without the acid. So the one you just did with spit and no acid, how does that compare to the one with spit and acid? So those are your two options. Once you've done them, you're going to write down your data. Now the data here, you're probably just going to have a list of um, your observations. What was it like with just, for the first experiment, what was it like with no spit? What was it like with the spit? Okay. For the second experiment, you would have one, what was it like with just the vinegar, with just the spit, and with the spit and vinegar? So you're going to write descriptions. What did it look like? You know, what did you see? Pictures are awesome. So if you can include pictures in there and label the pictures, that gives you a lot extra um, credit. And then your conclusion. You're going to put down on the conclusion um, whether or not your data supported your hypothesis. Is this something where, in question number one, does amylase break down starch? Before you even start, you should decide whether or not you think it does and write your hypothesis. Your second question was, does acid deactivate amylase? Again, before you start, make sure you decide whether or not you think acid deactivates amylase and write your hypothesis. 
So this part's worth four points. Your hypothesis, then list your materials. Your procedure, what did you do? What is the control? So in the control, remember, is what you're using to compare your experiment to. So for the first experiment, what did you use as a comparison? For the second experiment, what did you use as a comparison? Independent variable, this is the thing you're changing. You are changing this from the first trial to the second. So between the cracker with just the iodine and the cracker that you chewed up with iodine, what changed? Okay. In the second experiment, you have um, the cracker with just vinegar, the cracker with spit and iodine, and the cracker with uh, vinegar, spit, and iodine. Actually, the first one with just vinegar also had iodine. What did you change? That's your independent variable. Your dependent variable would be what, what were you measuring? What were you looking for? What observation were you trying to find? Okay, that's it. That's all you need to turn in, just this table. In a data table and a conclusion. If you have any additional questions, feel free to give me a call or send me a webmail. Have a great day, everyone.